about the intensity that you would need for a base coat if you're doing some type of mural at a zoo or a children's room or whatever. Um, but again, you want to roll that out with a paint roller. So that's kind of a uh, muted light blue. You would uh, roll that all out and then you can actually cut in with the white. Uh, for some reason, again, the latex paint really soaks up your airbrush paint and turns it a, a horrible uh, teal type of color here. Now for working on illustration board, I have not uh, had a lot of problems uh, with paint turning a, uh, with blue paint turning a teal type of nasty tone. Uh, there's just something about maybe the properties that's in the paint that's on the wall that turns it a uh, teal color. But uh, when you go right onto a poster board or illustration board, you can actually go ahead and attack the surface. And again, it is going to be dependent on the type of uh, illustration board that you're working on. And the first thing I'm going to do is just start sculpting the clouds out. I'm definitely paying attention to my photo reference. I'm going to isolate the top corner here. And basically leave the white area alone. And one thing that's kind of cool is when you're airbrushing, you can actually turn the airbrush to the side like this and agitate it. And the agitating will actually presuppose the uh, breaks that are in the uh, clouds here. So this is a real important move. A lot of t-shirt artists in the past have actually used crescent type movements. That comes in handy too. We might sneak something like that in later. But for the most part, this actually is a good way to break it up just by turning the airbrush to the side like this at a 45 degree angle. But again, stay true to the photo reference when you're uh, breaking these clouds up. Basically, all I'm doing is sketching right now just to break the clouds up and make sure I'm just nailing down the blue part. One of the most important things that I've learned through doing millions of clouds on a lot of different surfaces uh, is that the shape of the clouds is probably the most important thing. Uh, positive and negative space and how you're going to execute that positive and negative space and of course the texture as you're sneaking it in as you go. So I'm going to go ahead and keep leaving the white alone here. This is all really, really dark over in here. And with this Aztec, I'm going to open my roller like so. I'm going to open this roller to the right. And basically, this opens up the cone of the airbrush. You can really hog a lot of paint on. And traditionally, I would use a high flow nozzle with something like this just to get in and out. My pressure is around 55 PSI. But if I'm doing a huge wall, I may uh, really jack the pressure up to like 80 and sometimes 100. Uh, and if you're going to turn your pressure up that high, you definitely don't want to use this airbrush to do that. That's when I'll sneak in uh, a Pache or any type of hog blaster type of airbrush, maybe even a uh, HVLP where it's necessary. I'm going to come in here and again keeping my airbrush at a crescent type of uh, angle. I'm going to start really chiseling some of this out. Now you can actually come over here at the border and do little fine wisps and that will help you balance this thing out here. If I have a huge area here I'm going to leave white and cut in kind of randomly. It's easy to actually put cheetah spots all over the place and too many of those if you put just totally uh, round areas which presupposes the holes that are in the clouds that just really destroys it. So uh, one of the things I've learned over the years is that clouds actually, when you look at real clouds sometimes, they are very ugly in nature. Uh, not all clouds look beautiful. Some of them look uh, like Swiss cheese. They are dirty looking. So as artists, we're trying to go in and recreate the whole process here. And um, depending on the intensity or the nature of the imagery you're doing, you may not want to put too much uh, uh, gray or holes in the clouds. It really uh, messes it up at the end, I think. So I'm going to go in here and keep uh, refining at an angle here. And now we'll start sneaking in the tricks to give this a little bit more uh, texture here. Staying at an angle.
So what I'm going to do now is come in with some dark blue. And again, I do not want to spray dark blue right out of the bottle. Things in nature are very uh, muted looking uh, if you want to achieve more realism. So with this powdery blue mixture, I'm going to come in and darken that a little bit, but not uh, overdo it. So I'll see where I'm at with this. You can even add gray at this point. Test my flow here. I think I want to go a little bit darker than that. And that's looking a little bit better there. So the camera may or may not be picking up the intensity of this color, but it certainly is getting uh, very dark, and I do not want to go to a totally dark tone. So now I'm going to come in here with this dark blue, and I'm going to do some secondary tones or value of this blue here that's in this photo reference. And I think it's real important to stay true to what you see, because actually colors in the sky do fade just like any other color does. Uh, down here at the bottom, it's really dark. I'm still standing at an angle with this. And continuing to carve lightly and not overwork this. You can see that I'm really trying to wisp this, little wisps, as much as possible. And I can actually start carving out little random shapes and I'm going to refine with my little trick here in a second. And there's a lot of different ways to do clouds. I always try to remember that airbrushing is still in its pioneering stages so I don't think anybody's figured out one predominant way. There's some amazing freehanders out there. The whole purpose of this is to learn a quick little trick that just really expedites um, your whole process when you're working and hopefully trying to make money too. Now anything that I overspray and really kill, like if there's a uh, white area of this cloud that I just totally kill that I shouldn't have done, uh, then you can actually sneak the white back in. It's not a sacrilege to do that. So this darker blue actually sets up a nice little color transition um, in accordance with the light powdery blue that's on here. Uh, if you have an old pillow, you can rip it open and just pull the stuff out of it. Uh, but a couple things that I've learned over the years is that if you pull this apart, the slower you pull it, don't get in a hurry, the cooler the rip. You can also maybe put spray glue on it if you want to. Because the main thing we're trying to do here is to make sure that it's not totally falling apart. If you get some uh, fabric softener sheets here and you just basically rip them in half and lightly uh, rip the edges. Get a piece of tape and just tape this lightly. Kind of keeps it stationary. And this is again real important that when you're tugging at these, you don't want to totally screw them up and uh, put uh, a bunch of holes in this. But just get them to the point where they look like clouds or how clouds blow. And this actually will serve as a nice little uh, template to add texture to the clouds. Let's do the first pass. There we go. And you want to spray lightly and evenly. I'm going to spray here and make sure the paint actually catches up with the pattern. I'll do a check. And that definitely breaks the clouds up. Some people I've seen burn these things. I have to put holes in them and do a lot of different things to create the texture. But when you zoom in here, you can see that definitely breaks them up. Next thing I want to do is come in here and rip open my pillow stuffing. You can buy this at any craft store. I saw a lot of different people do clouds a lot of ways, but uh, you can just come in here and kind of get in and out, and it really breaks these clouds up. Um, don't reposition wet paint. Try to position this in different ways each time you do it. But again, let the paint catch up with not only the texture here, but the surface. You can see how that starts to break it up. I'm going to flip it over on the reverse side here and maybe get a little closer in certain areas and you can see how that breaks that up uh, pretty nicely. So here's about how I'm ripping this thing as you can see real slow putting little tugs in it. And again if I need to I can put some spray glue on here spray glue the whole thing step on it with my feet or maybe even iron it Again, you don't want dirt on your artwork, but 
uh, maybe step on it with your socks or something and then put it in the freezer and this thing will be more stationary when you're tugging it apart so uh, this does taste some uh, craftsmanship too when you're trying to come in here and nail down uh, the texture so I'm going to put this part about right here test my flow off to the side and I'm actually getting pretty close and I'm letting the paint catch up with the surface and the texture if you get real crazy and you start waving this back and forth it's really going to uh, uh, mess this whole thing up so don't oversaturate the paint I think I will border that just to bring the eye in and this is probably a good example of how you don't want too many cheetah spots in your artwork if you start getting real patchy all over the place it really runs it so I think what I'm going to do here is continue carving this out putting random little billows here breaks it up and then I'm going to come in and calm my colors down as I continue breaking into the inside of the perimeter of this big billow here. So I'm going to about that intensity again. I'm going to crawl on the inside of the perimeter of the clouds now. Okay, now I'm going to take a fabric sheet. I'm going to rip it in half. Try to do a jaggedy rip here as much as possible. Now a lot of dust falls off of these, so after you use these onto your artwork here, you want to make sure that you uh, sterilize the surface. So with these, I can come in here and start chiseling out certain little shapes that I think are necessary. We'll go in and zoom in so you can see the intensity of how these uh, fabric sheets break the clouds up even more here. I want to get real close because this is one thing that you will never be able to do with a paintbrush and that's why a lot of uh, fine artists take airbrush classes not to do t-shirts and stuff like that but just to take an airbrush and accentuate something that they're already doing so uh, an oil painter may use uh, this technique for the background of a wolf uh, image or something like that. So you can see how this definitely breaks it up. And once I come in here and start sculpting this like so, I can actually freehand a lot of this out. Just to kind of presuppose that it is wisping. And I'm not going to be redundant. I'm going to keep grabbing different things uh, to break these clouds up. And it actually gives them a level type of look. I can actually uh, keep coming in with crescents, little wisps. You can see I'm getting a lot of different tones of blue now, which is going to be pretty nice in the end. Even down here, I'm going to break that up. So backing off, you can see how you start to sculpt the billows with a combination of soft uh, edges and a lot of really intense uh, detail. So I'm going to move to the top and continue sculpting this out. And a little bit of gray to my mixture here. You have to make sure that you're not just coming in and putting cheesy billows uh, with holes in them. So clouds need to flow and take on form because this does presuppose that they are moving uh, constantly. And this is the point where you need to make sure that you get really detailed and you stay true to exactly what you see. Because this is where you could definitely overwork it and just totally kill this. So this is a good contrasting element to all this fuzziness uh, to come in here with some acuity and do a lot of uh, free handing. So I'm going to come in here and work certain areas of this. I've even seen uh, people come in with sponges uh, if they're doing a picture of uh, uh, the earth and the clouds are actually swirling and flowing and so on. Well, watch how this actually brings out a nice little counterbalance. Again, I'm looking over here about every, I don't know, 10 seconds to make sure I do not overwork any area. Pill stuffing just really sets it up to where it gives you a basic template to work off of, but uh, that's why people like airbrushing because it's always going to give you a very believable look that a paintbrush will not. Remember, you're slinging dust around. So I'm going to continue working different areas of this to pierce out the glowing parts of the clouds and move on. I'm going back to my powdery blue that I started off with. I'm just going to break that up a little bit and again make sure you get close 
and let the paint catch up with this pattern. The slower you go, uh, the more believable the pattern is going to be. So you can see how that breaks it up. And just like with the white, we can actually go and taper the blue off also. Coming in at the side, I'm looking over here at my photo reference. I'm just kind of wisping that. A little wisp. You don't want to go back and forth and be cryloning. And again, I don't need real cheesy patches here uh, or cheetah spots. So I'm make sure I fade those out. To make it look more like it's blowing and drifting. So now what I'll do is come in with my gray. Let's really try to nail down some more detail before we come in and dust our gray here. Now believe it or not, this is a high flow nozzle. This kind of comes in handy when you're teaching this because when you're teaching and doing videos, you have to stay at an angle anyway. So this is real good discipline for me and to show you guys that it really just comes in handy. And what this is doing is creating a lot of different little layers for the clouds. When white uh, starts to sink into the surface, it actually comes in handy like it does on the water drops, as I mentioned earlier. But it is definitely not sacrilege to come in and do some free handing. So I'll continue doing this and then come up with the gray uh, to give this a little bit more uh, dimension and believability uh, to presuppose that these things are actually uh, coming around at you. So I'm going to come in here, I've got about 70% white in my color cap. I'm going to do one, two, three drops of black or transparent gray. I'm going to stir this up a little bit. Test my flow off to the side. And that's more than enough. So uh, with just a tiny little mist, make sure you go off to the side and test your flow. Okay, I'm going back with my white here. Just pull that out just a little bit. So finishing up here, you can see that color is everything, not only with water drops and wood grain and almost anything that you do, but clouds are actually not that hard to do. It's really the body or the shape of the clouds that will make or break it. Sneaking in whatever you want to to achieve texture uh, is going to be an important thing, but I think overall the body and the shape of the clouds and if they're moving or if they're stationary is going to be a, a big component. Uh, and the believability of what you're doing. So you can see that even though this is just a square with clouds in it, it will serve as a very good background for almost anything that you do. So at this time, let's go ahead and move on to the next texture. <laughs> 